Ladies and gentlemen, it is a big, weird, wild world out there, and here we stand, folks. Al pie del cañón. I'm Rob Grams, that's The Natch, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Good morning, people! It's Tuesday! Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Are you doing this fine morning? just want to say a big good morning to JC, the one and only Juan Connor. I want to say good morning to Gandalf, uh, joining us from North Carolina, who, wow, it, it's so late in the evening there, or early in the morning, one of the two. Welcome, welcome. And I want to say a big hello to my mom, Natch. Mama Bo is in the chat. How are you doing, Mama Bo? Um, and the bridge... Oh my God! Ready for anything? Pa 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 pa! Says um, <laughs> says Jesse. Uh, hi, Mum. Uh, I've got see no more no swearing today, Natch. We've got to be on our best behaviour. How do we behave? We have to behave. Mum's here. Mum's here. Um, how are you doing, guys? You're listening to the Probo Show, coming to you live at eight thirty Central European Time. This is a morning show. Maybe for you, it's an evening show. Um, in Australia, for Sasha, who I think is going to be joining us today, it's an afternoon show. I don't know where we are and what we're doing, friends. <laughs> how are you doing today? So it's Tuesday. We've um, officially um, we've officially chipped off. We've broken away the first fifth. Of this work week, Natch. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. We're still uphill for another day and a half. <laughs> and then it's done. It's over. Um, how are you doing? Pedro from Instagram joining us. Guys, if you want to be one of the people that I'm mentioning right now, it is so easy. You go to twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. That's bohemio profesional, but in English. It couldn't be easier. Twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. Bohemian, just like Jareon. Good morning. Um, uh, before I start today's show, I just want to give you all a quick reminder. Friends, on the 30th of November, which is, oh God, it's next Wednesday, Natch. <laughs> I need to prepare the questions. <laughs> next Wednesday, the 30th of November, um, at Calle Amaniel number 23, um, in Roll Madrid, at 8.30, Natch, Andrea, and myself will be hosting the Vaughn Quiz Night. And it would mean the world to me if we had some Pro Bowl Show members in the crowd. I want to see you guys. I want to see your beautiful faces. Can I just say, by the way, Gandalf, Bridge, uh, Mama Bo, Pedro, Jareon, you're looking good today. You look, you just look, you're looking good today. I don't know what you've done. I don't know if it's, it's your hair or, you know, your, I don't know, you've, you've maybe done something to your face, wearing your makeup different. I don't know. But you're just, you're looking great. So, um, good job there. Um, so, if you want to join us, join us there. Twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. Um, so, yeah, be there for the, the Vaughn trivia night. I'm super excited. I may not have prepared the quiz yet. <laughs> but it will happen. It will happen. Um, we haven't decided. Well, I know what Natch is going to do. Natch is going to bring his, um, uh, his audio excellence, as he always does. But I want to do something about pop culture and maybe nerd trivia. And that's my, that's my bag. Ten, quest, 10 questions of on each. How's that sound, Natch? <laughs> That'll be a quiz that, that, that... It's a great equalizer. Because all the smartest people in the room don't know anything about Star Wars. Or the Marvel Universe. You know? <laughs> um, looking good yourself. Thank you, Gandalf. How are you doing, Simbo? Welcome, welcome, friends. What's coming up in today's show? Let me tell you. We have two oh, delectable, delicious, complete the news bits today. Oh, so good. We're going to go to um, Missouri, Natch, and we're going to go to um, Florida. Keep that in your mind because maybe we don't have time to do both, so we might have to pick one. And then after, uh, before that, before that, we're going to go to 100 humans and find out what people did before the invention of the television. Okay? Um, uh, but all that fun, all that fun and excitement and craziness, friends, that happens in the second half of the show. And we've got a whole first half to get through. Today's unpopular opinion was quite popular, Natch. It was quite popular. Um, every, in, in fact, an average of, I would say, 69% of people kind of agreed. <laughs> and it was, what was it? That working hard no longer leads to a better life. And I got the, I got the idea for this. Um, well, I'll tell you all about that. 
later when we get into the um, unpopular opinion. But it's a good one today. It's a good one today. I'm ready to argue this point. Um, I'm looking more like your twin brother, Rob. <laughs> My attractive twin. It's like you you sucked up all the good looking genes. And I got the I got the talking genes. <laughs> it's true. It's it's true. Pedro is like a better looking version of me. If you if you that story is no longer there. Maybe I'll post it one day. Um, Pedro, I hope to see you at the Vaughan Quiz on um, the thirtieth of November in Real Madrid, so we can take a proper twin photo. Um, and and that's what's coming up in today's show, guys. But before we get to that, let's get to this. I'm here. You're here. Let's look at what's going on in the world. Um, Natch, you're a big Disney fan. Did you know they've just um, they've just fired their CEO? And rehired their old CEO. Why? Um, the why is a bit unclear. There have been several kind of under Bob Chapek, um, who was the the latest CEO. Bob Iger was um, was in charge of Disney for the longest time. Then Bob Iger in 2020, um, I think it was just pre pandemic or during the pandemic, he stepped down as CEO, and Bob Chapek t- took over. And there was um, there was quite a quite a bit of controversy under his leadership, um, particularly in the parks. There was um, uh, accusations of price gouging. Do you know what that is? Price gouging is when you're overcharging for things, where people, you know, kind of uh, once you're in the in, in the um, environment of the park, you've got no option but to spend way too much. So there was accusations of um, of price gouging. He um, let a few key people go in the company that upset a lot of people. Um, they, he he got in in an argument with um, uh, with the Florida representative when they they released a bill about. Um, well, he got into an argument about the park that the park wasn't um, paying sufficient taxes, and then they released a bill about um, not being able to mention um, homosexuality in schools. And he was heavily, and Bob Chapek was heavily criticised for not coming out and making a public statement on that, given that you know their home, I think, in many people's eyes, is Florida. So ba- basically, at every turn, this guy has um, has hit a brick wall, and now Bob Iger is back. The hopes of Disney is under Bob Iger. I would I would contest, and it's not a very popular opinion, that the problem wasn't Bob Ch- Chapek. The Bob problem was Bob, uh, was Bob Iger. Because a lot of the missteps that they made leading up to 2020 were under his um under his his time there as the boss. Um I'm looking um what's this? It's 8, 8.30 a.m. or p.m.? It's 8.30 a.m. in Central European time. Um, so they had a pandemic fill-in. Well, the, the, the weird thing is he had his contract renewed, um, the, the CEO that's just, um, just been let go. He had his contract renewed until 2025, um, uh, and this was relatively recently. So something maybe has gone on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. But yeah, I was talking about a lot of the missteps under Bob Iger. Um, kind of the deterioration of the Star Wars franchise that was under him. Um, a lot of the deteriora- deterioration of the, the MCU happened towards the end of... Um, well, no, actually, that's not true. The MCU was probably at its most powerful in 2020. But a lot of things have happened to Bob, poor Bob Chapek. They've, um, they've lost a lot of money in a lot of their um, original media, ESPN, Hulu, um, streaming. Apparently, they, they lost $1.5 billion on Disney+. Plus. Can you can you believe that, Natch? Disney+, Plus under, under Bob Chapek, to be fair, became the number one streaming service. Even took over Netflix. But it cost them one, I think it was $1.5 billion um, to get there. So, yeah, back to, um, back to Bob Iger. Um, do you know anything about the about all this um, all this stuff that's going on at uh, um, at um, at Disney? No, nothing. Nothing. Well, there you go. You're up to date, Natch. That's why I'm why I'm here. So you'd have to read the news. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Um, I meant the event. Oh, eight thirty in the evening. Thank you, Pedro. It's eight thirty in the evening. Calle Amaniel. 
um, 23, Roll Madrid. Me and in the Natch being silly in public. Um, I know a bunch of you have reached out to me on Instagram. Um, I'm, t- I'm actually replying to people on Instagram now, Natch. Yeah. <laughs> I can't avoid it. I can't avoid it. <laughs> so a bunch of you have reached out to me. Let me know that you're going to be there. And I'm super excited to meet you all. Um, so that's um, that's what's happening at Disney. Yeah, a surprise announcement late last night that um, that Bob Iger was going was gonna to come back. I don't know. I have a kind of a weird feeling that, um, that Disney is in a death spiral that no one can really control. I mean, they were heavily invested in traditional media, which is, you know, slowly but surely becoming a thing of the past. You know, they have the parks, but, uh, you know, thanks to the pandemic and, and now a reluctance to overspend because of the economy and, and, and the cost of living, um, a reluctance to travel, a, look, a reluctance to maybe s- spend an exorbitant amount of money that is even for Americans to go to, um, to the, the parks. I feel like Disney are in a bit of a death spiral right now, you know, and they haven't had a massive, what was the last massive box office success they had? Maybe Encanto. Encanto. Or, well, massive success. It was a film called named Soul, something. Ah, I don't Soul. think it was a, a success. No, I think that was in 2020 as well, right? That was um, in Bob, it, when, before Bob Iger left, he had something like nine movies reach a billion um, dollars. He, like, he, he left when the company was at all, an all-time high. But because of the environment that he created at Disney... It was um, it was quite unstable. I mean, he didn't hand over the reins to to Bob Chapek um, of a healthy, growing company. He kind of, you know, the end of the the first that phase of Marvel that was super successful came and went. He knew the pandemic was going to be a big issue, and he says, "Okay, I'm out. Thanks." <laughs> Later. <laughs> Probably a pretty wise move. I don't know. Um, Let's see, Gandalf. Maybe they should go with a John instead of a Bob. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, you know, Bob is or Bob, Rob, Robert. They're all um, very resourceful <laughs> um, and attractive people. <laughs> uh, Min says, to be fair, the MCU probably lost most of its popularity after Endgame, which kind of closed the main Thanos storyline that was going on. I think so too. I think so too. I mean, you know, is it corporate greed? The fact that these movies are still being made? Is that corporate greed or is there a real demand for more? I felt satisfied. I'll be honest. I felt so satisfied after Endgame. I was like, okay, this is done for me now. And after that, there was a kind of, you know, for me at least an emotional kind of closing of that chapter, you know? And and everything after that has felt a little bit unnecessary. Have you, have you seen a Disney movie, a, a MCU movie recently that felt like, you know, I needed to catch this episode, otherwise... It was... No, I started to, to, to not care. Exactly, me uh, too. Se- except for Spider-Man and maybe Doctor Strange. <sighs> Ooh, maybe. Spider-Man was really good, you're right there. Yeah, but Spider-Man was really good. I wonder if I watch it in two years' time, if it's going to be as good. Because there was that moment... Okay, I'm not, I can't give you any spoilers, but that moment where, you know, the your favourites came back. So no spoilers, but... You know, kind of spoiler, <laughs> and it just hit me in my in it hit me straight in the heart. You know, because you know, I can't, I don't want to give too many spoilers, just in case you haven't seen Spider Man. But there was there are, there are, there is a moment in the movie that is very nostalgic, and I think that movie that that move or that part of the the movie kind of erased anything that was bad. You know, and it, I also feel like it kind of existed outside of the Marvel universe. It was no, it was consequenceless. You know, and it, and I didn't have that feeling with a lot of the movies prior to Endgame. Everything felt like it, the, the, it had a consequence and it was leading towards something. And I haven't had that feeling that we're leading towards somewhere with a Marvel movie in in a long time. Um, PM, I think, says. Um, uh, says the bridge i think in ref- replying to um gandalf min i don't know disney is so massive and controls so much of the media into the spider-verse was really good that's a sony property into the spider-verse they're actually working do you have you seen into the spider-verse natch it's um an animated spider-man story there are two spider-men in in marvel comics there's miles morales and peter parker 
And uh, Into the Sp- Spider-Verse follows Miles Morales, and it's an animated movie that incorporates a lot of s- different versions of Spider-Men from, um, from the Marvel comic universes. Uh, really wildly successful movie, very, very entertaining, and, uh, and they're, they're actually working on, um, on a second now, which is uh, exciting too, but it is a Sony property. It's not um, a Marvel property. So let's see how things go, man. It's interesting. I'll um, I'll have my finger on firmly on the pulse of this um, of this story of this um, Disney as it progresses, and I'll let you know how it goes, guys. Um, also, uh, the the Walking Dead match. You ever watch the Walking Dead? No, I saw the first episode, and my wife uh, <laughs> banned it. Right, no more. <laughs> she of this. hates uh, zombies. Yeah. Well, it's finally finished. You know, I, I dropped off around season... Whenever... Again, spoiler... Look, I'm going to say some spoilers. You know, close your ears for a second. When Rick disappeared from the show, Rick Grimes, the titular... The kind of... The main character. When he disappeared from the show, I disappeared from the show. I was like, no more of this. Um, uh, but 11 se- seasons in, they finally finished this thing. Finally. I don't know what it is. Recently... I mean, British TV is really unique in the fact that each series or each season, let's say, cada temporada, each season. Wow, Spanish, great. (laughs) Every season, cada temporada, has like a very few episodes on British TV, like eight episodes, six. You, When I was a kid, it used to be like six. I remember watching one of my favorite shows was Red Dwarf a sci-fi comedy show. And it was like six or eight episodes per season. And you think, wow, you know, that's that's next to nothing when you compare it to shows like House MD that are like 25 episodes that are an hour long for each season. And then not only are the seasons longer in the States, the, the, the show runs for like 11, 12, 13, 14 seasons. And I think that's what that's what happens. Like a lot of shows that would have been spectacular have kind of lost popularity because they've just gone on for too long. You know, they're not heading towards any point. It's one of the biggest criticisms I've had about um, Stephen King as a writer. Don't get me wrong, I love Stephen King. I follow him on Twitter. I think he's, a, he's amazing and he is an amazing writer. But if I was going to have... If I was going to compare him to a, a British writer, for example, James Herbert, who um, writes very similar kind of horror novels, horror fiction. Um, when you're reading James Herbert, you always have a you're you're taken on a journey that has a clear beginning, middle, and end. And with Stephen King, it's beginning, a ton of middle, and then aliens. That's how <laughs> that's how it goes. You know, I don't feel like he's ever working towards a real definitive end. I'm thinking about books like Tommy Knockers and things like that. His earlier books were, were much different. Carrie, Cujo. Sorry, I'm rambling now about Stephen King. I can't remember how I got here. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about um, American TV, right? And that said, I'm a massive fan of American TV. Um, let's see. Uh, Pedro says, The Spider-Man reunion is one of the most epic scenes of superhero movies for sure. Agreed. Can we get a Probo approved, please? That gets the Probo stamp of approval. The reunion hit me so deep in my in my chi- inner child, you know, that, that I will probably never forget being in the cinema and experiencing that. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Fun fact, Disney also owns a construction company. That doesn't surprise me with the um uh, with the packs, you know? It would it would make sense to own your own construction company. Um, honestly, The Walking Dead went on for too long. Yeah, I agree. And then the spin-offs don't seem to have found their feet. Has anybody in the chat seen any of the spin-offs in Spanish? A spin-off? No, I don't know. Is it? Is it? <laughs> I knew it, Natch. I knew it the whole time, and I still didn't get any Valatha. Yeah. Well, I think it's sequela, maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sequela. <laughs> But a spin-off is perfect. Thank you, the, thank you, thank you, thank you. The E at the beginning. E thank you, thank you. It's, it's crucial. It's crucial. Um, yeah, they, they made a lot of spin-offs. There are more spin-offs coming. So we haven't seen the end of the Walking Dead universe. It's just the beginning. You know, I had more news today. I wanted to talk about DoorDash, um, a, delivery, um, a delivery company. Um, but it's not really current news. 
it re relates to something that went down um, a year ago. So I might save it for tomorrow's show, guys. We're going to deep dive a company called DoorDash and particularly their altruistic efforts. They, they donated a million dollars to um, uh, to a charity run by um, Sesame Street, the workshop, the children's workshop, and they do a lot of work for children's charities. But there's a dark side to their altruistic efforts, or maybe not even a dark side, just something that lifts the veil on the virtue signaling of modern business. <laughs> Well done. If you can understand this show, guys, you deserve um, you deserve a nivellato. <laughs> um, American reality TV is probably the lowest of the low you can watch, says Min. Their movies are good, but even more series start off strong and then go on for too long. Um, American reality TV, it's been... I mean, yeah, I watch Survivor. Okay, I do watch American reality TV, and I've been known to watch anything with Gordon Ramsay. Because as a British man, it feels amazing seeing another British man just screaming at Americans. <laughs> You're a donkey! <laughs> Eres un burro. You're a donkey. I love it. Um, the, I, in the end, nothing beats British panel shows. Oh, Min, you're going to get a Probo approved? Probo approved. So one thing I miss from British TV is that the British panel show. Oh, Never mind the buzzcocks. Have I got news for you? Um, uh, nine out of ten cats. The, guys, if, you're not, if you've not watched any British comedy panel show, do yourselves a favor. Do yourselves a favor. You're going to enjoy it. All right, let's quickly go to today's unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. All right, my friends. Um, uh, yeah, every day I have a brain fart. A pedo cerebral or a pedo mental. I share it with you on my social networks. On Twitter, arroba, at P-R-O-B-O-H. Or on Instagram, at arroba, professional bohemian. Bohemio profesional. Um, I, I have that brain fart. I share it with you. You tell me how you feel about it, and I argue it. Um, and... Where the decision is actually made, am I right or wrong, is right here in the chat with our live audience. That's Min, Pedro, Bridge, um, Gandalf, uh, JC, all the people that are joining us right now. Okay, so today's unpopular opinion was, working hard no longer leads to a better life. Working hard no longer leads to a better life. Um, how do you feel about that, Natch? What's your, what's your immediate thought? Oh, uh, I would say that it's true. Yeah. No, 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 sorry, no longer. So I would say it's false, false. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think working hard leads you to a, or guides you to a better life. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. The, the, I got this, I got this idea. I, I follow um, uh, an annual report. It's called the Edelman Trust Barometer. Trust, um, Confianza. Of no, fian no, come on, say they trust. Confianza. Confianza, mm -hmm. okay. I was right the first time. Buy a nivelazo. Oh, I love it when you give me a nivelazo, even when, you know, I doubt myself. <laughs> so I, I follow a, an annual report called the Edelman um, uh, Trust Barometer, and they poll a lot of people, and and their their main focus is on um, uh, on trust, um, and it, it breaks. It can break things down into nations, into demographic sections, and it, and it's fascinating. It always reveals fascinating results. Now, today's unpopular opinion, actually, according to the Edelman Trust Barometer for 2022, which was released in in January, is not that unpopular. Um, uh, globally, about 68 percent of people believe the same thing. And that's a number that seems to be increasing every single year. I don't think it ever worked very well for one uh, for one working, the rest of the family was happy. I don't think it ever worked very well for the one working, the rest of the family was happy. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair point. I voted not necessarily, but working hard on something that is your passion might lead to a better life. That's from um, Pedro from Instagram. Um, okay, so w I did some research as to, as to why people might feel like that. Because that's like the foundation of the, I mean, we in Europe, we know it as the American dream, right? You go to America, you work hard, and you're rewarded for your efforts. It seems like 
it's the being rewarded for your efforts, <laughs> which has somewhat fallen by the wayside. So as according to what I could read and what I found out online, people think, um, or the, the impression is that, you know, it's not necessarily the hardest working or the best people that are being rewarded in life. It's the thieves, the cheaters, a few in a few individuals have eradicated the middle class. Those hard workers, ni ricos ni pobres, ni, not rich nor poor. And now working hard is to survive, not to thrive. Okay? Whether well, you want to blame that on technology um, being made obsolete, certain jobs being made obsolete because of um, technology, or whatever you want to blame it on. It seems to me that the harder you work doesn't necessarily correlate to the more successful you are. And, and I think not only I feel like that, I feel like a lot of people feel like that. We'll get into more of the bones of this argument in the second half, but I will release a poll for you all to vote on right now. What do you think? Does working hard lead to a better life? I don't know. Guys, um, thank you so much for being here. There's a lot of things you could be doing today, and instead of doing those things, you're here with me. See you soon. Hey, guys. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind-the-scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian, and you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Probo Show on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Friends, how are you doing? It's cold out there, wrap up warm. Can I just say, um, wow, all the people in the chat right now, uh, Mama Bo, Min, Gandalf, Pedro, JC, you're looking good, guys. You're looking good. I don't want to be creepy, mate, but you are. You, you, you do, you're doing a great job here in the, in the chat. And just in the real world, you're killing it. Well done. If you want to join us live on the show, you can do that on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. Join me there. Or you can interact with the show outside of its normal hours. Well, interact with the show, meaning me. <laughs> Good luck. Um, on at P-R-O-B-O-H on Twitter or at professional bohemian on Instagram. All right. What did you miss if you just tuned in? Uh, we were talking about The Walking Dead getting into its 11th, or finishing finally after its 11th um, uh, season. Then we were talking about um, Disney, the the media giant that is Disney, and how they have um, recently gone back, backtracked to their old CEO, Bob Iger, after um, uh, two years, I believe, of tenure by uh, by Bob Chapek. Quite, um, uh, also, another thing that happened under Bob Chapek, do you remember, Natch, when um, the Scarlett Johansson had the pay dispute with Disney? That, unha- that happened under, um, under Bob Chapek, and it ended up become- becoming quite a media spectacle. So, yeah, he's, um, he was quite an uh, embattled CEO, so it's, um, it's a shame to see him go, because um, it would have been nice to see him have more of a chance at the wheel, but, you know, whatever, whatever, I don't care. These guys are millionaires. <laughs> I'm not going to feel sorry for him. I'm really not. Um, and then we went into today's unpopular opinion, which was working hard doesn't lead to a better life, true or false. Um, on Instagram, 71% of people said true. And on Twitter, 66% of people said true. Working hard does not necessarily lead to a better life. But that is the dream we are sold, ladies and gentlemen. No, that's the dream we are sold. You start off, as an infant, you get put into a school system. you got to work hard. Otherwise, you won't get into the best class. If you don't get into the best class, you won't get into a, a good secondary school. If you don't get into a good secondary school, you'll never get into a good um, high school. If you don't get into a good high school and do well at high school, you'll never get into a good college or university. And then at the end of this this educational system that is forcing you and increasingly stressing kids out with exams and, and things like that, you're kicked out into the world and you start in the bo- bottom rung of a ladder, of a career ladder, and you're promised that, you know, you work hard, work hard, and at the top of the ladder, when you eventually get there, there's something waiting for you, this grand prize, this grand destination. So you work hard, you dedicate... 
a lot of your time leaving often um, to one side family and friends in order to focus in on this career, this prize. And eventually you're in your mid 40s, maybe your 50s and you're there. You're in the office and you're waiting for this prize to come and nothing's there. The box is empty. To quote... Um, uh, to quote um, Alan, um, Alan, not Alan Pease, Alan Pease, the philosopher. Hang on a second. I need to, um, uh, no, Alan Watts. You know, life is not um, a goal or a destination. Life is like music. If music were like that, then songs would just be a, a crescendo and nothing else. They would last 10 seconds. <laughs> no. The point of life is not to um, not to get to the destination, it's to sing and dance while the music is playing. Okay? And I think slowly but surely we're coming to the realization, not just as individuals, but as a society, that working hard, look at the richest people in the world. Are they are they really the working the hardest? Is Jeff Bezos working harder than someone who works in one of his fulfillment um, centers who aren't allowed to go for toilet breaks working 12-hour shifts? Is, is he working harder than those people? I don't think so. I really don't think so. So there we go. The myth of working hard. Does it does it necessarily lead to a better life? I'm not going to make this decision, friends. Um, you already have. I will release the uh, the results of our live poll in a second. Okay, let's, um, let's see what people are saying. Um, Sean Locke passed away. Um, yeah, Sean Locke is... Um, uh, he was... One of the panel members on 9 Out of 10 Cats, a British panel TV show, um, and a great comedian, and he passed away, sadly, yeah. Very very well um, very well reminded, Min, thank you. Um, I instantly agree with stronger working rights and better minimum wage. There is no reason to put 60 hours in most jobs. True. True story. I agree with that, Min. Um, yeah, Gandalf goes on to say, Gandalf is in the chat, he says, now the whole family works and it sucks. Yeah, it used to be there was one breadwinner, right, one provider, and the rest of the family could survive on that one income. And that person would work hard, um, his family would reap the benefits. Now, everybody has to work. Otherwise, you can't survive, you can't make ends meet. You know, you can't get to the end of the month and pay all your bills. Especially now with the cost of living crisis, the wealthiest aren't going to suffer, guys. It's me and you who are going to suffer. Most of you guys, maybe like me, you have two jobs, <laughs> you know, two, uh, two income streams because one isn't enough. And that's not just, that's not just me. That's, that's you. That's, that's a lot of us because we need to make ends meet. We need to, we need to have enough to um, uh, to live comfortably, but living comfortable comfortably often entails like two hours of free time where you enjoy your life because the rest of your time you spend working. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. I'm getting head up, Natch. I'm getting angry. Can you see? <laughs> um, let's see. These days, um, by youth, it's more so seen as an American nightmare. I made the argument that the, it's the American dream, right? You work hard and you're you're a success. Um, I would say it's actually rather than American dream or an American nightmare, as, as Minna said there, it's more of um, a capitalist dream, right? In capitalism, you know, you work hard, you provide a service that is valued, and you um, you are rewarded um, proportionally to the effort that you put in. But that's just not the reality nowadays. I mean, is there even a point to going to university? I think I was the last. Um, my generation was the last one to actually be able to um, wh whose degrees were actually useful at the end of those um, at the end of university. True statement, son. I love to make my mum proud. She said, "True." That's it. Show's over. <laughs> Thank you, mum. The issue comes, this is from Min, this is a really salient point, I read this through the break. The issue comes if you're already in a lower income bracket, your money goes to maintaining yourself, meaning you can't save. Oh, amen, Min. Amen. There is, saving is impossible now. Everything, everything you have goes into that, like, for example, you earn X amount a year. You spend that that money, you go on, if you want to take a vacation, if you want to do anything. Who's putting, who's saving now? Who is actually saving? Is, is there anyone out there saving money now? You know? No. I mean, we use we use banks out of convenience, you know? Just because we want to pay more taxes. <laughs> no, pay me into the bank, so then I have to pay the bank when I take my money out. 
And when I put my money in, obviously there's a there's a fee too. If I'm saving, I have to pay. I have to pay it for service fees. It's just it's just ridiculous, you know. What the bank, what what banks and modern society want is to keep you um, uh, keep you in debt. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. I'm getting uh, I'm getting extreme here. Um, in order to save up, you have to work much more, which then traps you since you no longer have free time to improve and develop yourself. I mean, you're going to get a probo approved. You are. Probo approved. Uh, Pedro, everything you want to achieve requires working hard, going through times and re- um, going through tough times and resilience. But it's not just working hard. So I agree. Working hard per se is not the formula. No, because what's missing in this picture is the amount of luck. The amount of luck. It takes a lot of luck to be in the right place at the right time to receive the right opportunities. Now, I will, I, I'm a realist and I recognize the harder you work, the luckier you will be. <laughs> because you put yourself in the way of opportunities. That makes sense, right, guys? You're in the way of opportunities because you're always there. You're persistent. You're working hard. But just because you're persistent and working hard makes you more likely to be lucky doesn't necessarily mean that you will be. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will be. Um, have you heard, Rob, el burro por delante pa' que no se espante? I've never heard that. <laughs> but thank you for sharing, Bridge. Uh, Pedro, beautifully put, Rob, but one can find happiness along the path towards success and hard working to get there. Yeah, true story. Society's shift from single earner household um, standard to a double earner household, honestly, it sucks. Yeah, amen. Amen. And I'm not saying that from any patri- patriarchy. Okay, guys, I would happily be with a woman that wanted to support me and I'll, you know, take care of the family and the house and all that, all that stuff. Maybe give me an hour a day to do a podcast. <laughs> no, 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 it is. It is. It does honestly suck. It does honestly suck. Um, Hadri, in Spain, working hard is not the same. Uh, you only lose quality time with your family. You will never achieve something important. And that's Hadri. Great, great point, Hadri. Yes, um, Pedro says, yes, we save less, but we also spend much, much more. We have higher standard of life than our grandparents, for instance. Okay, true story. All right, I'm going to, off the back of what Pedro's just said there, it is true. We live in a time of abundance. Um, If we look at our grandparents' lives, we're living longer, we have better health care, we have, um, basically in every measurable metric, we are living better. But I think... Over the last, and I'm talking about a short period of time, maybe from 2020 to to, um, to now, over the last two years, for the first time in a long time, we're seeing a dip in standard of living, okay, or the quality of life. We're seeing a dip in there, and it's n- and it's normal that people would react. I think um, another another thing that that is evident that is very clear in the Edelman Trust um, uh, Trust survey is that people. I'm reluctant to trust anyone. I mean, obviously, government is the least trusted, but not the media, no one. I mean, the highest the highest trust ranking falls to um, businesses. And businesses that, that only have their own self-interest at heart, you know? Um, let's see what else is being said. Um, as long as the pay rises never reaches the rate of inflation, we will never be better off. Yeah, exactly. Amen to Mama Bo. Can Mama Bo get a special... Um, uh, Probo approved. Probo approved. Love you, mom. See you soon. I'm going home for Christmas. Sasha Hayes. Hello, I'm late. I know, I know. How are you doing, Sasha? Um, you, you're not that late. Don't worry. We're just going to wrap up our unpopular opinion. So, I, what are my final thoughts on this? I think I actually, I actually wrapped up the final thoughts <laughs> when I introduced the topic. Look, working hard. Okay, I'm going to be rational now. Very, very rational. I'll try to be. It's true that how do you work, the more you put yourself in the way of opportunity. But there is sacrifice, you know. Um, Quite often, people have to make the choice between career and family, career and free time, career and and hobbies, passions. You know, not many people work nowadays in in what they want to work in. You know, and their dreams take a a second place to either work or, or whatever. Like people like me who have to have two jobs to kind of make ends meet. It's true. I live in a big city that's very expensive. So I made my bed and I lie in it. Okay. But is that necessarily fair? 
Is that necessarily? I, I, is is it true that the harder we work, the the more we're awarded? Again, I'll, I'll draw the um, uh, I'll draw the comparison of um, Jeff Bezos. He's not working harder than the people who work in his fulfillment centers. Those people who are working twelve hour shifts with no bathroom breaks, you know, who have every increment of their time in the office measured. He's not. That's a fact. You know, and and Jeff Bezos has been richly awarded. And I know a lot of you listening to this, you're working really hard and not seeing much progress in the quality of your life. Let me tell you something, guys. Your hard work is not in vain. The more, the harder you work, the more you put yourself in the path of opportunity. And that, friends, is the game now. It doesn't automatically translate as success, but gives you the highest chance at success. Um, and if you are one of those people who are working hard and not seeing the results you feel like you deserve, I salute you. Because you're not alone. There's many of us in the same space. All right, friends. Um, and on that, that is the um, unpopular opinion for today. Working hard um, does not um, necessarily correlate to a better quality of life. Now, can I have a drum roll, Natch? Eighty-six percent of you agreed with the statement. All right. Well done. Well done, guys. Thank you so much. Let's go. To 100 humans. Ooh, Lordy. Oh my god. It was a long walk to work today, guys, through snow, uh, across snow capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered 100 humans and I asked them all a question. Today's question, Natch, it was um, uh, name an activity people did. Before television. Name an activity people did, people would engage with, before television. All right. I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I'm in possession of the top seven answers right here. Your job is to identify those top seven answers. Okay, while you're all thinking, I'm going to go back to the comments, see what people were saying. Besides maybe mental health, we probably have it way better, yeah. But we've also been more conditioned to get new, uh, yeah. To get a new phone every five years, new TV every ten, wash it, yeah, exactly. We are in that cycle of, yeah, this is why I hate marketing, man. (laughs) We're going to do, we we may do an episode on marketing tomorrow. You know, that cycle of making you feel less unless you own the, the newest thing. That phrase, new and improved, making you feel what you have is old and inferior. I hate it. But yeah, that's a very good point, man. Pedro says, every measurable metric except sperm. Yeah, I've heard about the decrease in sperm count. Spermageddon, says Pedro. (laughs) Oh, my God. If you ever get a a career in in making porno films, um, Pedro, that is the name (laughs) of your big hit. Spermageddon. (laughs) <laughs> the bridge i thought i heard a screech of bricks um i'd say that yes we have it better we're also more wasteful plus shift to two and a household means that everything is more expensive for the individual wow great point Min, min's on fire today Men's on fire today. I think the important the important thing and best way to live is to enjoy the present as best as you can oh what a great way to wrap that up thank you bridge all right so Let's get back to today's um, 100 Humans, an activity people did before TV. Okay, Natch, do you have any insights on this? What do you think? Well, I have to say listening to the radio. Listening to the radio. You know who agrees with you? The bridge agrees with you. Listening to the radio. All right. Is it there? You and the bridge? Radio? Something people did before TV? Yes, it is. Well done. Bridge, Natch, not only is it there, not only is it there, it's the number one answer with 30 of 100 humans saying people listen to the radio. Those of the, you know, the smart people out there, the wise people, the, 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 the attractive people, the gods among, um, among men and women still listen to the radio. Those people listen to Vaughan Radio, specifically between 8.30 and 9.30 every single day. There you go. I said it. Or the podcast. Podcast people, you know I love you. You know I love you. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. So the radio is there, first place. Well done, guys. All right, let's see. Um, Mama Bo says reading. 
reading. Is reading there? It's there. Give a round of applause. Mama Bo. See? Mama Bo got all the brains. Sadly, it didn't pass down to me. <laughs> it's there. Reading is there. It is the it is the reading and writing. It is the fifth most popular answer. With six of the hundred humans saying before TV, they would um, they would read and write. All right, good, good, good. Natch has just stepped out of the studio to help someone. All right, let's see. Um, uh, where were we? Reading. Well, let's say there's a reason they had seven kids. So Min thinks, Min thinks, um, they had more sex. <laughs> they had more sex. Is having more sex there? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Natch is such a pro, man. <laughs> He's busy now helping someone record a show and just popping back to play the sound effects. Having more sex is not there, Min, but a great answer. Um, hobbies, says Mama Bo. Hob- there are hobbies in the list, Mama Bo, but I need you to be more specific. I need you to be more specific. Um, Pedro also said reading with Mama Bo. Well done, Pedro. Pedro from Instagram, killing it. Um, okay, Sasha says crafts. Crafts. I would say manualidades, you would say, right? In, in Spanish. Vaya nivelazo. Woo-hoo! It's going to be a good day, Natch. Crafts, is it there? Yes, it is. It's in sixth place. Crafts is there, sixth place, with four of a hundred humans saying crafts. Well done. Oh, my God, we're running out of time, man. I spent way too much time talking about... <laughs> talking about working hard. All right, anyway, let's continue. I can save the news, the complete the news for tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Um, okay, going out more. Going outdoors more. Hmm. Going outdoors more. Hmm. Is it there? Things people did before TV. Going outdoors. It's there. Well done. It's the third most popular answer with 16 of the 100 humans saying going outdoors. All right, let's see. Um, playing games and puzzles, says Hadri. Sasha says playing games. Um, playing games? Is games there? Playing games or puzzles, that kind of thing. Is it there? Yes, it is. Well done. It's the fourth most popular answer. Um, well done to uh, Hadri and Sasha. It's the fourth most popular answer with nine of a hundred humans saying before TV, people would play games. Guys, you're missing two. The least most popular and the and the second most popular. I'm going to quickly see the chat. Has anyone said this? Okay. Um, uh, opera and theater, says Gandalf. Playing games, cards, says Jareon. Um, painting, says Rosie Grams. Yeah, I should get back to that, M- Mama Bo. <laughs> um... Uh, Make love, says Hadfrey. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, let's see. Peeling potatoes, says Min. <laughs> I used to peel potatoes. My gran used to peel potatoes. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. This is a true true fact. Um, uh, working out, says Hadri. Um, riding a bike, says Sasha. Um, going to the park. Okay, none of those are there. None of those are there. Sasha does say, though, cooking. Cooking. And it's there. Well done. Something people did before TV. Cooking. Three of the hundred humans said that. It's in seventh place. Well done. And finally, one more answer. And uh, I have to scroll down a little bit to find it. Who was it who said this? Pedro from Instagram said chatting. Chatting by the fire. Talking. Talking. I can't believe he's the only person who said this. But yeah, talking. Is it there? Yes, it is. 20 of 100 humans said talking, guys. Well done. So, let's. we have to be super quick, like lightning match. Okay, so let's go through the list. I asked 100 humans to name activities people did before TV. In position number... Seven. ...was cooking. In position number... Six. ...was crafts. Manualidades. In position number... Was reading and writing. I'm going to write a letter to my pen pal. <laughs> in position number four. 
was playing games. In position number three was going outdoors, going outside and playing a while. In position number two was talking. TV killed conversation, man. And in position number one, when I asked people what people did before TV, 30 of 100 humans said radio. Well done to you guys who said that. Well done. Killing it. Winning at life. <laughs> I think that was Natch and the Bridge. Guys, you have some ace answers, some brilliant answers. Picking your nose, says um, Romanova. <laughs> Having sex. We got, we had that one. Um, to be fair, cooking also took longer. Yeah, yeah, true story. You're all introverts, Rob. We don't do the, we don't do talking. It's a true story. Okay, or or no? I have to engage in conversation. Let's give me Netflix. Come on. <laughs> all right, let's go to complete the news. Complete the news. All right, this is a complete the news where I give you a news headline with some information missing and you have to complete the news. We don't have time for both. We have to be very quick with one. If you're one of the people watching the show and you feel nervous, this is your moment. All you have to write is A, B or C. Okay, here's the news headline. Man pleads guilty. Amite culpa. Okay, he pleads guilty. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, Natch. Nivelazo. God, I'm on fire. A man pleads guilty after he robs a bank. He used his blank to write the demand note. He used blank to write the demand note. Okay, give me all your money or I'll shoot. Was it A, his forehead to frente? Was it B, his birth certificate? His certificado de nacimiento. Or was it C, his blood. A, B, or C. A man pleads guilty after robbing a bank. He uses blank to write the demand note. Is it A, his forehead? B, his birth certificate? C, his blood? What do you think, Natch? His blood. His blood. That was C. Um, a bunch of people agree with you. I see a couple of um, Bs. No one saying A, his forehead. All right. All right. Let's go for a drum roll, Natch. Man pleads guilty after he robs a bank and uses his birth certificate to write the demand note, making it very easy for police. Congratulations, everyone who said be there. Guys, that's all we've got time for. It's been an amazing show. Sorry I couldn't break down that news. If you follow me on Patreon, um, Professional Bohemian on Patreon, I will share the link with you there, guys. Been a pleasure. So many things you could have been doing this morning. Instead of doing those things, you're here with me, and it means the world. See you tomorrow. (laughs) 